Hey everyone, Greg here. As you may know by now, I'm the co-founder and CEO of TripShock, an online reseller for water sports and tours. For the past 12 years, we've had the pleasure of working with hundreds of operators across the country, and we're looking to grow our community. It's free to sign up, and you only pay when we bring you confirmed bookings. We'll help you reach new customers, fill empty seats, and grow your business like so many have done with us over the years. Head over to partners.tripshock.com to learn more about our program, read testimonials, or speak directly with our supply team. As always, thank you for listening and enjoy the show. They come to relax, enjoy the beach, have fun, and spend money. And that's where we come in. This is the Awkward Water Sport Guys podcast. Find out tips on the best ways to market and operate a water sports business. If you're a water sports operator, you need to grow your brand, operate more safely, upgrade your operations, and of course, increase bookings. We're industry veterans broadcasting from Destin, Florida. This is the Awkward Water Sport Guys podcast, and this is Kevin O'Neill and Greg Fisher. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 37 of the Awkward Water Sports Guy podcast. Today we are going to be talking about bare boat charters. And before we do that, we're going to open this up with something new, a new segment called Awkward News. Did somebody get caught masturbating or something? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <Public. laughs> um, well, this is awkward. <laughs> Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about things that have been going on in the past week or two with uh, water sports. You know, one of the things that catches, you know, that that I'm think that I think about is the gas shortage. And at first, I was really concerned about our industry, you know, because if there's a gas shortage, then you know the ability for us to run our equipment. Uh, could be hindered, but I was just curious, like you know, down at the docks. I mean, I've heard there were some there were some businesses that were literally concerned about it, and it didn't seem to really be bad. I'm like, I mean, now we're back to normal. But did you feel any impact from it? Fucking Karens, dude! I was out of town, man. I was down in like I thought you were leaving too, so I got a, I got a wild hair up my ass to leave. So I went to Crystal Rivers, Wikiwachi, Florida, and. No, I was fucking pissed, man. I was so irritated at our area because like everybody was just like freaking out on Facebook and people were just going bananas and I'm driving by get, and like even the guy who owned our Airbnb, he's like, man, you better go fill up. And I'm like, okay. So he's like, there's a little mom and pop gas station around the corner. So he takes me. And I'm like, oh, maybe it's something to be concerned about. So then my kids were like, dad, we want to go like to the mall or something. And I was like, all right, we're going to the mall. I'm on vacation, dude. I'll fucking be stranded with no gas before I don't have fun. That's like my life is having fun. And I drove by like 20 fucking gas stations. <laughs> they all had gas. There was nobody waiting and fucking, I'm like, come on, man. Like, and I look out <clears throat> where I live in Navarre, or as I like to fucking Karen County, everybody's fucking bah! like freaking out. Like, and, and, and I said in like a group, I said, made a comment. I was like, you know, somebody might be like, have like a lawn service. I got a boat rental. You're taking pictures of people filling up gas. They might not be like, they might be doing this for their business. Like I go and fill up a truck full of gas every day. And then she's like, oh, Greg, you go fucking worried about your community. So I like called, I was calling my crew. I'm like, are we running out of gas? They're like, no, it was like a pain in the ass trying to find it. But I just think North Florida, I did, and which is crazy because we're in like the hurricane fucking capital of the world that people were flipping out about it. And it's just, it was never, no one ever, there was never a single post on Facebook where someone was like, fucking, I'm stranded on the side of the road. Because that's what I was looking for. Because it was that serious thing. You would have fucking ran out of gas, motherfucker. But they didn't. <laughs> no, they're just being little assholes. Fucking social media. And it's just, to me, it's just, it's like, it's it just uh, a confirmation bias, dude. People live in a vacuum. They're sitting in their house. They got nothing better to do. They're staring at the fucking news. And then they all freak out and start running the place out of gas because they're fucking panic buying. So, you know, it's just mm -hmm. the reality parroting fucking social media. Do you know the Colonial Pipeline paid $5 million to hackers? You love it. Isn't that, that, isn't you're that unbelievable? You're guy. You're thinking to yourself... God damn it, man! I should be. Uh, I should have just. I fought. The, I got the wrong like, line of ran, business. I ransom. Yeah, they put ransomware, ransomware. Oh. and five million. Did I? Did I tell you my ransomware story? No. You you're gonna love this. So it was like forty five years ago. 
Someone went on live chat. You did tell uh, me about this. And they, they held you for ransom, right? They did this to you. Yeah. Did I, share, did, did I share this on the podcast? You yet? did. You did. We talked about it on the show. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to have to find tell that it, out. Though, tell, it, tell it for those who haven't heard the episode because it is a great story. Okay. I'm going to do the, the minute and I'll try to find the episode to get the full story. So basically somebody went on to our live chat and said that they had a fix for our website. And they claim that they can turn off our website whenever they want. Our agent called me and said, hey, this guy is saying that he can turn our website off and he says it's broken. And I literally told him to just, you know, tell the guy to piss off. Pound so, sand. I think that was the first Pound sand or piss off. One of, exactly. One of those it. two terms. So she told him that. And then all of a sudden, Trip Shock went dark. Like it was done for like 20 minutes. You could not use anything. I mean, you could even get the website up. And so um, the, the website came back on. And he said, see, I have a fix. And he wanted us to pay him in Bitcoin mm. for the fix. At that point, I'm trying to get anyone I can. My, my business partner, Alex, is involved. And he does some research and find out that this guy is running a denial of service attack. For those of you who don't know what a denial of service attack is, basically, they, they send a ton of bogus traffic to your website to where it shuts it down. It overloads it and shuts it down. You'd think that we'd have protection for that, but at the time, we didn't. Alex quickly installs a program to protect us from that. And he still, he was doing this like every hour. And just imagine like this is in the, in May and we're doing a significant amount of revenue every day in May. So this guy is, is having a major impact on our sales. So we uh, kind of ignore the whole thing. The guy goes away. We told him, you know, we kind of protected it, protect ourselves from it. Well, he comes back about a month later and does it again. So this is where he, he really messed up. Now, keep in mind that when, when these guys run these denial of service attacks, they are hardly ever caught. I mean, we're talking less than 1%, maybe even, even less than that. I mean, very minimally. I mean, it's people from overseas doing this stuff. Well, we decided uh, that we were going to try to find them. And it's like a thick needle in the haystack at this point. But when we looked at our traffic statistics, we were looking at, we knew this guy wasn't in the U.S. because you'd be stupid to do it in the U.S. Uh, he had to be somewhere else. So when we looked at our traffic, we found that there was this little town in Norway that had a lot of visits to trip shock prior to the attacks. So without going into detail, the nerdy, nerdy stuff we did, we found out his IP address and everything. And we contacted the FBI. We contacted the Norwegian FBI. And in fact, I'm going to give a lot of credit to the Norwegian FBI because they're a hell of a lot better than our <laughs> FBI. They uh, tracked down the person. They basically stormed his house. Just imagine like a bunch of agents storming like you see in the movies. That's what happened. And I'm thinking like this is like some big crime ring that we're taking down. And it was a 17-year-old gamer who was basically running these attacks to try to make some money for World of Warcraft. That's basically what we, we were up against. And he would just go to different sites. And it was at random. He didn't pick us. He just went on the internet and found a website that offered live chat. And there's a lot of really cool things. If you ever want to know the full story, call me. I'll be happy to talk to you. But the FBI in the States contacted us and they were really impressed with the way we were able to track. He said, they learned like this never happened. Hey, hey, this guy, this kid right now, he's like, he's like 22 or 23. He just started like the fucking Norwegian fucking version of trip shock. He's got an OTA. He's like your younger fucking brother. Like in 10 years, he's going to be you. Yeah. They stormed, they stormed his house. They took everything. And, and his parents are doctors. That's See, the that, wild. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like maybe like when you were 17, you were on some hyper fucking like like gamer shit. Like, I mean, you kind of got to get like like give the kid like a little bit of credit, man. Like, he's like fucking you, like 17 years ago, because you're kind of like real techy and fucking you know. All... I wouldn't have done what he did. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. No, <laughs> but, no, I'm not saying. No, I'm not saying that you were. I'm just saying from like the tech like kind of aspect of it. Like, I feel like. I feel like 15, 20 years ago, maybe you were uh, like a gamer, hardcore into the computer shit. Like, am I wrong? No, actually, not- I wasn't. I wasn't a heavy gamer. No, no, I was really into music at that age. But I was got games still a lot. Hey, hey, that was a roundabout nice way of me calling you a fucking nerd, man. Oh, that's fine. I'll take it. <laughs> but I know I wish yeah, I was more but, nerdy when I was a kid. God damn. The ransomware stuff. It's it's serious, and no one, none of us are really going to be affected. By I mean, op- washboard operators, especially. I mean, the worst thing you should be concerned about from a security perspective, 
as a water sport company is your website getting hacked and it being used as like a proxy or them extracting information or putting malware on it. Like that's the worst thing you can do. Uh, the worst thing that could happen. But, Ooh, you know, so it, you're, it's just, you're saying that's what I should do to my competitors come like Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, you know what you can do is that you can... So this kid was buying these resources for the attacks from a company in like the Caribbean. You know, he's buying the... And so you can buy the... Like for 20 bucks, you can buy, you know, 100,000 visitors and then send them to your... Hold on. You're like, like, I don't do this shit, but yet, you know, a bunch of black hat SEO tactics, like negative SEO fucking Fiverr shit, man. Come on. No, this is not a this is not an SEO thing. This is if if you wanted to be nasty and shut down your competitor for like twenty so, minutes. Right. The term the term for that is called negative SEO. So you can also do the same thing with like fucking link farming, right? You can like send like your competitor like ten million shit links to like spam sites and fucking drop their ranking. So I think it all I think it all falls in the same category of hackerism. SEO the negative SEO is is a long term play the right, denial right. of service attack is if I want to shut your website down tomorrow, you can go to the dark web and buy, you know, $20 worth of traffic and send it to him and send it to them and it will shut down their site if they don't have protection. Gee whiz, Greg, because somebody who doesn't do this sort of stuff or never would, you sure seem to know a lot about it. Well, I learned a lot about during this whole process sure. of protecting sure. from this guy. Sure. <laughs> no, but it, you know, it's really important to know what the dangers are out there so you know what what you know what to protect but everyone thinks that it's not never going to happen to me well you know you know you know about the security plugin that i have uh i've learned a lot about web security and that's kind of like my second life right now is web web security and it's kind of like I, I tell people it's like your lawn so the lawn may look pretty and green above surface but below the surface you got mole crickets, you got grubs, you got, you know, fungus. There's so much stuff going on beyond, beyond under the surface and no one cares about it until it comes above the surface and screws up your grass. So that's kind of how I explain to people with security is don't just look at it while the grass is green. Look at it as what's underneath it and clean it up because it's going to haunt you later on. And that's what we learned from the whole experience with this hacker and this ransomware is we now we have the best protection you could find. I mean, you can't do this to I us got, again. I, I gotta, I gotta probably say that more than likely not. Like a, a fucking somebody's doing like five hundred grand a year in in jet ski rentals or pontoon boats probably doesn't have to worry too much about it. No. No, we're, we're probably scaring people right now. That they're gonna you're get podcasts. You're those podcasts are they're, fucking, they're fucking scared of gas and shit. Now you got them fucking, now you're just carrying them out on being scared of fucking goddamn the internet. Now they're like, oh shit, my Wix site is not protected the way I thought it was. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Jet, just to cap this off, hackers do not care about a water sports website. They do not. They're, no. So don't even think about it. It's not a problem. But, you know, yeah. if, if you... The only thing you should really need to concern about is making sure that people don't log into your website and messing up. So if I'm going to get leave with one bit of advice, the easiest thing you can do is make sure you have a really difficult password. Okay, That's guys, less guys busy. I'm sorry for Greg's fucking nerd shit. Okay, we'll get back into fucking water sports when he's done with his goddamn nerding out on stuff. You guys don't worry about it. Your websites will be fine. Don't even worry about SEO, especially if you are in the Destin, Fort Walton Beach area. Do not concern yourself with that. <laughs> okay. Not, nothing uh, to worry about. All right. So <laughs> my new segment just got way out of hand. I went into a tangent. But I do – there's two more things about my new segment that I want to, I want to say first. Oh, my God. All right. Damn. So, so Justin Buzzy's company, uh, Get Up Go Kayaking, they are in the – uh, they're in a contest for the top kayaking tour company in the country. I believe it is. I, we posted it on Facebook. Vote, vote for him. I mean, vote for one of our own. Whoa, let's make whoa, him. Let's make whoa. him number one. I fucking what? kayaks, man. What the fuck, dude? Why, You're why, not a tour. I, it's tourish. Vote for Justin Buzzy and the clear kayak tours. He does got a great. I was thinking about that, and when I was in Crystal River, because we were me and the kids were kayaking and had a great time, and I was like, man, I'm gonna fucking set up shop here and buy one of Buzzy's fucking clear kayak shits, man, and set it up here, dude, because I don't even care if I make any money. I just wanted to – dude, it was amazing over there. Wiki Wachi, I've never been there, man. We got this little cottage, and there was, like, kayaking. It was fucking incredible, but I was thinking about him and setting up shop there, man. 
But yeah, vote for Justin Buzzy on the world's on the top ten USA Today kayak tour. Moving forward. So what else? What else? All right, Nick. One more is uh, Women in Water Sports Awards. Uh, This was this is put on by the National Women in Water Sports. Yeah, the women. So National Marine Manufacturers Association is putting on a. They're seeking nominations for the 2021 Women Making Waves. And any that's not woman, one of it's boating though, right? Boating. I mean, yeah, it's boating. Oh, okay. But it says, right. So it can be you can nominate anyone that's in any organization that does business in the boating industry. So I think it'd be kind of cool to see some water sport women nominated for this award. So also um, this just in uh number one CEO of OTA's award that Greg just got nominated for. I just made it up. So vote for Greg. The number one OTA CEO. in Destin, Florida CEO. There's only one. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's not and, true. There's uh, another one. There's another one out here. Not me. I'm not. I'm not. But I. Hey, this just in. I Trexy, and I've never talked about it on the show. I don't think. Have I? Have we talked about Trexy ever? A little I bit. Yeah, just I got an OTA a little bit, and we're about to go live pretty soon. I just we we they said they're gonna have my um they're gonna finally have my site ready, and it only took them like forever. So vote for Buzzy for kayaks. Vote for who are we putting behind to vote for women in uh, boating. I don't know. I mean, there's it's there's a yeah, lot of good choices on it. We'll have, to, we'll have to think about it. I mean, I, I have a couple privately that I'm going to nominate. Okay. Are you really so, going to nominate? Where do you get all those fucking I'm going to nominate. Oh, there's a lot of great women in water sports that we've worked with through the years on, on Trip Shock. I'm going to hey, nominate. I, I would definitely, I'd nominate, I'd nominate Amber Merrill from Power Up Water Sports. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Because I've realized that when I call Ben, so uh, up here, we're all friends. We don't really compete with each other. So when I call Ben, he never has a fucking straight answer for me. And I've learned, to, I've, what I figured out over the years is that his wife is actually the brains and the execution and does everything. I'm like, what do you do, Ben? And he's like, you know, it's a good question. I don't even know. So there's a link There's a link on the Facebook page where you can click that and there's an email to send. You know uh, all this. Can you just nominate Amber on behalf of me, please? I'll do that. Yeah. I'm not going to do it, man. I just, I never, I got to clean my kitchen. I agree. That's a good nomination. I, agree. I love her. We, okay, had, cool. we had him on the show. We should have had her. She's fucking, she actually knows more than Ben. Anyway, we got hyper local on you guys. You guys are like, who are these people? We're 20 minutes in and we've, we've not even gotten near the fucking, the subject matter today. Our news, the awkward news is done and it did not disappoint because it was really awkward. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. I hope we do more aw- awkward news, man. Awkward yeah. news. I don't know. We got to come up with a better segment name than that. Anyway, <laughs> all right, we're getting really local podcasty guy on here. So let's okay, get, let's uh, get into bear, what we do, man. Bearboat charters, bearboat charters, and cowboy. Like I've just been seeing all this. What shit. is it? What is bearboat charters? Ex- explain it to me, because oh, every time I, I read a definition of it, it's, it's something different. Let me yeah. let me just tell you what I what I've understood and what it is. Go. Okay, so bearboat charters is not the same as rentals. Sure. Is that correct? Okay, that's not this, the same. The, no, well, the, the, it's bearboat charters is not the same as charter for hire. Okay. Those are two separate things. So bareboat charters is some weird bullshit in the CFR. I probably should have pulled up how it reads in the CFR, which is a, a coastal federal regulations. And I'm going to paraphrase it here because it is a very gray area in the CFR. So charter for hire is when you're a captain and you have an un you have a vessel that you are taking somebody out. It can be uninspected. It can be inspected. You're a charter boat for hire. If that vessel is an uninspected vessel, you can have a maximum of six people on. That's not including the captain, so it's six plus one. An inspected vessel is going to be whatever it's inspected for. So if you have an inspected vessel with a COI that allows you to carry 20 passengers, it's 20 plus usually plus one and one. So captain and captain and crew. Um, I'm mostly all my experience has been a port uh, board of 12, so it was 12 plus two, 12 passengers plus captain and crew. So every vessel, as you get bigger, gross tonnage, it might be 120 plus one and five. Uh, there, I, I believe there is a static number. It might be one crew member for each 12 people. I could be wrong on that. 
But regardless, that's going to be a charter for hire. Those of you guys who are doing six pack charters, uh, fishing charters, uh, pontoon boat charters, and you have your captain's license and the vessel is in your name, you're doing a charter for hire. And you have to have, you know, the appropriate safety gear, blah, 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 blah. We're not talking about charter for hire. We're talking about bare bones charter. So bare bones charter, bare boat charters is going to be when someone gets a boat, doesn't matter, it can be your personal boat. It can be, it, 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 I believe it should be uh, registered uh, with the county as a commercial or what's called uh, CM other or CH other, one of those two. And it's like charter for hire, basically, or commercial boat for rental. It's not registered as a pleasure vessel here in the state of Florida. I have a boat. It's registered as a commercial boat. It could be a rental. It could just be a, a boat that I have. There's all these captains in my area that want to take my boat. They don't have their own boat, but they have their captain. They want to take six people and do a charter for hire. What a bare bones charter, bare bones, bare bones charter, bare boat charter is, is when there is no captain. It's me, a guy, you, you call me up and say, Kevin, I want to get your boat. And I, these people are, I'm going to bring these people on the boat and take them out for a cruise. And I go, okay. So me and you draw up a, a, a contract between the two of us and you take these people. According to the Coast Guard, there's a video circulating around where the Coast Guard, did you get a chance to watch it, the one that I sent to you? A partial. Yeah. I will I will link it in the group. Um, I'll link the video. Um, it's the one of the only videos I've seen officially from the Coast Guard that talk about it. But so the idea is you you get the you get the the boat from me and the people contact you directly. They pay you directly. You have no affiliation with me. You don't work for me. Uh, you're not employed by me. You just reach out to me, ask if you could take my boat and take these people. You you pay me or you don't pay me or we trade beanie babies or crypto or whatever it is, whatever the deal between you and I is. And then you get take direct payment from the customer. You have to make sure that you have insurance. According to this video, I've never heard of that one, but the charter has insurance that you have made sure all the safety equipment is aboard the boat. You have a contract on the boat. And in this video, which I found to be the most ambiguous statement of all, was that it's a 12 plus one. That's what the Coast Guard petty officer said on this video, 12 plus one. Well, that's really ambiguous because you might have a boat that's badged for 10. If that boat is badged, that means it's got a stability ladder for a certain amount of weight or a certain amount of people. Um, back in the day, up to whatever it was, 2010, 2011, you could carry um, 10 passengers or 1,350 plus engine or 2,000 with engine, whatever it was. But basically what the Coast Guard was saying was that the average American weighed 135 pounds. Clearly, that's not the case anymore. And they had to up that to 185 pounds. So now your boat will be badged for 10 customers or 1850 or 2240, whatever it is, it's 18. Well, maybe people. you think maybe it's 12 plus one, you know, pending capacity limits. But he doesn't say that, though. That's not said in the video. He just says 12 plus one as it's just a static number, no matter what. Oh, shit. Well, but so, so this is how gray and unclear the Coast Guard is about bare bones charters. Now, if you get pulled over by the Coast Guard and you have your paperwork and you're not affiliated with the boat and you have 10 people on the boat and you've chartered the boat and you have the life jackets and you have flares and you have all the safety shit, the Coast Guard's supposed to say, thank you, goodbye. Now, it's going to be up to the petty officer on duty as how, because the petty officer on duty has the right to interpret the rules of the CFR however he sees fit. So every area, this is different because the challenge is like, like in Miami. Oh, sorry, my phone's ringing. From Miami, Florida. For whatever reason, I'm getting spammed from Miami today. I've had a 305 number. Anyway, yeah. So that's uh, basically if you get pulled over by the Coast Guard, the petty officer on duty, the, the, uh, the, the officer, the boarding officer, basically has just, he's going to interpret the CFR. He's going to say, this is how I see it. This is how I interpret it. And here's your ticket. And it's like God's law. So what was your question, Greg? So let's say that I'm, I'm a captain and I go to you and say, hey, Kevin, I want to uh, use your boat to do a charter with paying customers. Mm -hmm. So I go to you, we, we make a deal to do $500 for the boat. And then 
I take the boat from from you. I get my customers. I have an arrangement with those six or seven customers. Ah, stop though. Okay. okay. Six or seven. That's a big number. So here's where here's where it comes, right? So you're just doing a charter for hire, but now you got your ticket. Now you're a captain. So it's up to that petty officer if he wants to interpret that as a charter for hire or bare boat charter. If he interprets it as a bare boat, you can have seven. If he interprets it as a charter for hire, you have overloaded the boat and you are in you're in violation of the, the rules for charter for hire and subject to fines. What if I am not a captain? Could I do that? Yeah. Could I- no, so according to the Coast Guard, because in that video I sent, they never mentioned a captain's license. So, yes, now, all of a sudden, you're a bare boat charter. You can have up to the badge limit, okay, per fucking, I don't care what that Coast Guard said. If you got a boat badge for 10 and you have 12 people on that boat, you have overloaded the stability letter that the naval architect who designed that boat, who signed off on that boat, the petty officer who did the stability test on that boat says can legally be on that boat. If that boat is badged for 10, you cannot have more than 10 people, period. You know what I found kind of interesting, Kevin, is is uh, last year, the year before, we had one guy book a ton of pontoon rentals through TripShop, through various companies. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this guy isn't going on a boat three times a week. <laughs> like he has right. to go. I mean, maybe he was going to Crab Island three times a week. I don't know. He worked stupid like that. But yeah, he was oh, the only thing I can think of is that he was renting the boat and then maybe turning around and doing a bare boat charter and, and charging somebody. But then again, there's no contract between TripShock and that person other than the purchase he made on TripShock, which who could be loosely interpreted, you know, as a bare bone charter rental. But then again, he's renting it from the individual part, the partner too. It was just a weird situation where I felt like maybe this guy was potentially doing something like that. The whole thing's fucked up because I mean, in the keys I've heard, you know, that there's guys with their captain's license that been char- that been chartered out, you know, the company rents the boat. They give them a list of captains that they can call. They call the captain. The guy's got his ticket. They put 11 people on the boat. Guy's got his license. And the Coast Guard's good with it. But then you have Miami where all these bear boats are getting pulled over. And it's like fucking yachts with like 70 people. And and so I, it's, I find it a very befuddling, you know, sort of uh, – it's, it's confusing on the part of, of the Coast Guard because they're just kind of like, eh. As long as you, because this this part doesn't make sense. It just does not make sense to me that some slapdick who doesn't have his license can put that a number of people on the boat. But if I got my ticket, I can only put six. Like it just it I and, then, and the payment I don't understand either. So why would a business like yours be interested in a bare boat not. rental program compared to just a livery being a livery rental? I don't think there's not. any advantage. So really, the only advantage for bare boat is for people who are renting privately. Like, let's say that I own a sailboat and I want to rent it out three, four days a week. It would, bare boat would probably be the best route for me because I can rent it to, to, a, to a captain, a, do a bare boat style to a captain, and he can take it and charge per person. Yeah, I mean, I don't because know. Because te- technically, if he, if he rented it directly from me, let's say that I, I was a, a registered company, you know, and I, I owned one sailboat, all I did was rent it out. I would have to, I would, fortunately for me, I would have to rent it out to people who were capable of, you know, navigating it. I mean, a sailboat is a difficult thing. So for me, I would only want to do bare boat. It only makes sense because I'm renting it to a captain who is in turn taking people out. I mean, it, it's well, safe. Might not, it might not be a captain though. Yeah. It's not, there's nowhere in that, does it say that you have to have your captain's license and nor does he have to provide you with one. He has to provide you with no credentials. So I have two thoughts on this. One, as a business, if it's something benign, if you're on a lake, if you're in a protected waters, but again, none of this is stipulated by the Coast Guard though. You know, you could fucking apparently do a, a fucking bare boat charter to, to fucking Antigua if you want on a fucking pontoon boat. And some guy's got an app on his phone that fucking dies after whatever you get so far offshore and it's literally no idea what he's fucking doing. So, you know, I, I feel like I feel like this is like a weird, a very weird and bizarre gray area. The reason I'm not super into it is that because as a 
maritime professional and was a seasoned fucking veteran captain. Like, I know shit. Like, I know shit that, like, it's really funny. And and I'm not going to get into my big giant fucking ego, you know, but I have sat behind the wheel of a boat, of a parasail boat, for like tens of thousands of hours. I feel really qualified for what I do. And I feel there's a pedigree as to what I offer and what I do and when I'm behind the wheel of a boat. And when I'm watching people out there, like I know what those guys are going to do. You know, if I'm some guy that's like, oh, well, you know, there's money to be made in boating. Fucking cool, man. Like, uh, you know, do you, do you see the jet ski coming off your port side? Do you fucking see the wake that this 72 foot Viking is throwing? Do you see the boat coming up astern? Are you paying attention? That's like saying it's like a fucking bare boat semi truck. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't have a fucking CDL, but I have an arrangement with the owner of the truck that's going to allow me to fucking drive the fucking highways and byways, transporting, transport, transporting or trans, uh, transporting fucking hazardous material. You know, but I got a fucking bear boat charter fucking handshake with this guy, so I'm good to go. So I find it I find it very ambiguous and I and I won't say dangerous, but I've had heard of guys doing bear boats and getting fucking drunk with the customers. Yeah, because they have no captain's license, they have no skin in the game, they have no random drug testing, they don't have any of these things. So this guy could be smoking crack and and fucking drinking rum and putting his ad out on Craigslist and doing, and this is where I wanted to do this episode because I do see these ads on Craigslist. You know, we do see guys fucking buying jet skis and then fucking selling them on Craigslist, which I'm sorry. You know, look, I understand if you got to get, you got to get in the game somehow and there's nowhere to get slips and, but there's a right way to do things. There's a wrong way to do things. In my opinion, getting a boat or getting a jet ski and undercutting your competition and renting fucking for super cheap because you don't have the, you're not incurring the costs, nor are you have to play the game by the same rules and live up to the same standards. That's like fucking like you know selling food and shit out of your car or something to me. You know what I mean? Like oh, I'm cooking up steaks, man. I got the best steakhouse. Let me bring it from a different perspective, though. Let's say that I got my captain's license. I had a lot of hours on the water. I can't afford a vessel. And I form a relationship with your rental company and say, hey, Kevin, I'm a licensed captain. I want to bear boat your boats. I'll, I'll pay you whatever your rental fee is. I'm going to charter it. You know, here's my credentials. Wouldn't it be good for someone who's trying to get into the industry that can't afford to buy? If you're doing it, if you're doing a charter for hire, yes. If you're on a drug consortium, yes. If you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing and you're taking under six passengers, yes. If it's this ambiguous bullshit, it's a bare boat charter. I've got 10 people with me and I got my captain's license and fucking. And that's like, because at the, at the end of the day, if you get pulled over, you're also going to ruin that that person's trip because if the if the coast guard says hey no this is fucked you know what i mean you can't do this uh or and and they turn around go back get the people off the boat and now you put your business at at risk so uh we got a we've got a saying in 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 our industry and probably every other industry that has to do with weather and shit and it's when in doubt don't go out and when it comes to these bare boat charters, I'm not saying that no it's illegal because clearly this the coast guard sees a, a place for it but if you're a business and you're, you know, and you're trying to maintain a reputation and, and this and, and this and this and that, and you want to be professional and you want to have, uh, again, like you can't, it's so weird because if there is a reputation, I can't just say, oh yeah, you and me are going to do bare boats. Now you're associated with me. I have to give the customer a list. They have to be able to, I can say, here's 10 captains, here's 10 charters. Call one of them. They come walking up. You guys, I'm not affiliated with them. I can't speak for them. I can't say if he's high on meth or not because I don't know him. He just came up and said, hey, give this to your customers and call me. I'll drive the boat for them if they're drinking and driving. Because there's the other part of it. You know, if they plan on drinking, wouldn't it be better to have somebody that's sober, even if they don't have their license because that's safer? And 100%. Yeah, man. If you call me up and say you're drunk, I want to get one of my employees out there and let them drive it back for you. But guess what? Now it's a fucking charter. Yeah. And it's, it up, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. You know? So I, I, what I say is, is if you want to do it, do the right thing, get your captain's license, get your six pack. If you're on an uninspected vessel, you got six. If you're on an inspected vessel, that's, you know, and you have, you know, the proper, all of your, your uh, extinguishers, 
if you got like a halon system that's all being inspected by the fire marshal every year you're doing a hull inspection to to make sure that the that the vessel is seaworthy and you have a and you have a captain's license that allows you to take a, a vessel of 25 50 or 100 gross tons or less and you have an inspected boat and you want it then yeah man go for that but I, I just feel like the bare boat charter things is, and I'm, again, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be done or it can't be done. I'm just saying that it's so ambiguous within the CFR that if you have a rental and you want to get into this bare boats charters, because we've had the opportunity to do that before. And for me, it's just so much headache because if they get pulled over, there's so many questions. Like they separate the charter and the, and the, and the people. And they question them to make sure everything's been followed. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, why even have this? If it's like, okay, let's make sure they're following the rules. Separate them. A crime has been committed. Like, what? I don't know. Yeah, do, you, do you think that the whole barebow charter thing is more geared towards, like, larger vessels than small ones? It seems like... No, no. They're pulling them know, over here nonstop. Well, but what, I've, what I'm saying is that I, I think the whole concept of barebow charter seems to be more for larger vessels. Like it seems like it was, it was built for that. For, so, for example, let's say that I was going to do a, a trip down to the, key, the Keys from North, Northwest Florida, a big sailing trip. I know a guy that has a 100-passenger catamaran. Wow. Can so, I stop you now? Can I just stop you now? Go dude, ahead. That's the most dangerous shit I've ever heard in my life, dude. That means anybody without credentials can take a hundred fucking people on a foot. Oh my God. Hey, let, me, no. let, me, let me finish. A guy has a hundred passenger catamaran. There is a qualified captain, a guy who that, who has done this, done these Key West to Destin trips a hundred times. Is the vessel and certified? Vessel certified. Okay, now it's a charter for hire. Well, he he is not a he doesn't own the boat. I mean, he's this is a different okay. owned by somebody else. So it's still a charter for hire. And now now it's a whole different ball of wax. Now you've got a certified you have a you have a certified captain with his license on an inspected vessel. Now it's a now it is a it's a completely different ball of wax. That's not a bare boat charter. So the bare boat charter is only on unexpect unexpected vessels, uninspected no. vessels. A bare boat char a bare bone charter is going to be between you and a charterer that is not necessarily licensed, not necessarily qualified, somebody that is basically, it's like an Airbnb or something that's like leasing the boat from you. And he's been contacted by the customers because he can't, again, if you are going, you have to provide 10 captains or five captains. You have to give them a list and say, hey, because it's got to be between you and you have to have an agreement between you and the charterer. But the agreement, the 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 agreement has to be between the charteree, if that's a word, and the charter, the customers and the captain have to have gotten together. And then he comes to you with all these people and says, I'm going to take this boat. And then you and him are going to draw something up. Now, if they might have contacted him on getcaptains.com or getcharters.com, or you've got a list of 10, 12 people, but it, it has got to be no exchange of money between the customer and, and you. That's the other rule is that you can't take money from the customer and then pay the charter. That it has to be between the customer and that guy, and then you and him end up having this arrangement. I see something on paper. So yeah. So that, so, so, what, so, what, so basically, what you're saying is the boat that they take out can be inspected or not inspected, and then yep. the person who takes them on the charter can either have his license or not have his license. Yeah, that's where it all fucking changes. And I think the problem is, is things that have been happening in South Florida, like what you're talking about. They're getting these fucking yachts and having these massive parties. And and then it's like, I mean, the vessel's not technically inspected. And, and it, I mean, yeah, you can fit 50 people on it, but it's not an inspected vessel. So now the captain's got to be six people. So this is how they're like circumventing this on uninspected vessels. And then it's happening so much that down in South Florida, they're just letting it rock and roll. But in Key West, they're not. Their guy was out there with a fucking big old catamaran and he was putting people on there and calling it, uh, calling it a bare boats charter. And then they were finding him and the fines are like up to $90,000 a day. It's intense. So that's what I'm saying is that, that it's because it's so ambiguous that, you know, it, the best thing to do is that if you want to take an entrepreneurial, you got to have some skin in the game. You know what I mean? Like, I, I guess, yeah, like you can rent a boat and then, you know, fucking be, I guess you could be like charter for hire and put that on Craigslist 
and have your captain's license and then rent the boat and then take them out. But is that a bare boat's charter now or is that a charter for hire? So again, it's just this really ambiguous language within the CFR. And then again, ambiguous as, you know, because the petty officer on duty is going to be the one who say, yes, this is a charter for hire or yes, this is a bare bones charter. This is the way I see it. Here's your ticket. Here's the ticket for the master Here or the owner of the vessel. It's it's a very weird dynamic. And it's also done differently, interpreted in different sectors because the country is broken up into sections by the Coast Guard. And so you'll, you actually have to call that, like if you want to do something in Destin and you are unsure, you would have to call our Coast Guard station in Destin, let them know what you plan on doing or the vessel because you what what works in a protected bay uh, because again the vessel's got to be certified but if it's near shore versus offshore versus if it's in a lake versus the protected water because we have different navigational characteristics and our waterways are different then those officers and those inspecting officers in those sectors have to determine what is legal what is not legal how the, you know, I mean, just like in Key West, like they go over, I was just talking about somebody today, they go over like our radar arches with the, and that has nothing to do realistically with the structural integrity of the boat. You can have a radar arch that's fucked up, but I've seen guys that come across and they look at every weld in the radar arch, you know, because the parasail line is is going over this or, you know, going over, or, well, it's not going over the radar. Back in the day, they thought they had whatever yeah telescoping fucking whatever but these guys they go over the radar arches of the boat and looking for cracks in the weld and we, i've seen boats get shot down for a hair literally no thicker than a hair crack in a weld because the okay. guy is going over the whole inspection so everywhere is different i got a so i got a question so if someone rents from you mm-hmm. and says hey kevin i don't know how to dri- drive the boat i'm mm-hmm. going to i found this guy off facebook marketplace he's a captain I'm going to have them drive the boat. What do you tell that customer? I say, I don't fucking, well, hey, whoever you bring with you, I mean, you don't have to tell me anything. You get on the fucking boat with whoever, fucking Joe Blow, and he drives a boat and you paid him. That's between you guys. I have no fucking idea. And if they separated, so- if they separated them and then that's, and, and that was what happened. And they said, hey, I found this guy on Craigslist. And then fucking, I told the guy that I was renting the boat from that I found some guy on Craigslist. I'd be like, yo, there's some weird dudes on Craigslist. I would advise against that, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm in the clear. I'm fine. Okay. So you, so you don't get in the middle of that. Now, what no. if um, they called you and asked, do you give them recommendations for nope. captains or, okay, you just stay out of that. Nope. Yeah. I'd have nothing for you, man. I don't know. Is that, is that, is that an assurance issue? Like, let's say that you did recommend nope. somebody. No, it's a uh, with a Coast Guard because if they yeah. say like, oh, he recommended him, now I'm in the fucking bareboat charter business, you know, because I told them yeah. fucking here's a captain for you. Now, if they have under five and I know a licensed captain, that's different. Now, yes, I can take the money. I can take full payment. I can rip payment to the captain because now it's a fucking charter for hire, completely legal, under six on an uninspected vessel, six under six or under at it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so I want to, I want to kind of break off from that and then talk about like the jet ski thing a little bit or the like illegal fucking rental. Like we have a problem down here with cowboys, you know, and again, again, is it illegal? Is it illegal to rent a boat? What if I had a garage somewhere and that, and I, a trailer and a truck and I'm like, here, man, I'm renting you a boat, take it to the fucking water, dump it in, drive it, have fun. Bye-bye. How is that illegal? Hmm. Right? It's not illegal. And I'll tell you what, that's why when we've been in these proceedings and these conversations at the county level, that's why they don't give a shit because they know it's not illegal. There ain't shit you can do about it. If I rent you a boat out of my fucking driveway and you take it to the thing and drop it in and go for a drive, well, but the problem is, is here is they're going to figure something. They're going to figure out, they're going to put something on there. They're going to put an ordinance on there. So does it hurt the industry? I say yes and no. The reason I say it is because if you go out there and you're uninsured and fucking you cause an accident, well, it doesn't hurt my industry. It doesn't raise my rates on my insurance because you were uninsured, dumb, dumb. You know, now does it hurt my industry from a optics perspective? Absolutely. Does it make the county want to crack down on this stuff? Absolutely. If you got a ton of idiots out there renting boats on a fucking public waterway, on a public park and dropping water boats in and people doing damage. And, and, and probably that's the reason why we catch so much shit around here and why the public doesn't like us because of the dumb shit 
that these motherfuckers do. Instead of just getting a slip, getting your livery, getting insurance and doing things the right way. No, you're going to fucking try and circumvent everything and, and, and fucking save a bunch of money and, you know, drop off at a public park. Now you got some guy renting boats out of a fucking public park, you know, because they keep when you keep on taking that further and further and further. Now they're not coming to your facility, renting the boat anymore. No, they're meeting you at the public park and you got people with trucks and trailers and you're dropping boats. Do you, do you think that some of those rogue operators like to call them? that they're using the bare boat as their, as their way of renting. You think that that's, I don't know, man, because I don't know these guys, you know what I mean? No. So another thing too, if you're doing bare boat rentals, do you have to have any type of like a business license? Do you have to be a LLC? Is there any regulations recurring that, or you can just be a private owner? And I would think so. Because again, like that bare boat charter has nothing to do with the county and business level like what if i live in what if i live in fucking michigan or texas and i'm bringing my boat down here for 99 days or 89 mm-hmm. days it's neither 99 or 89 it's either 90 or 99 days i might have been confused with 100 days summer but i think it's 80 it's 90 days if you have a boat in the water for or in the state of florida for over the 90 days it has to be registered in the state of florida but it doesn't have to be if it's under 90 days so if you came down here from michigan well i got a business license in michigan my boat is registered commercial and it's only here for 89 days hmm. so it, it gets it's very ambiguous and so i say to that is do things the right way because if you're uninsured if you're dropping at a public park if you're doing this bullshit it's not sustainable first long term. And secondly, like you're going to lose your shit. Like you're going to lose, like somebody's going to get hurt. You're not going to have insurance and you're going to lose your thing. You're going to lose your business. You're going to lose everything. You're going to lose your home. You know, you could be losing future income. Think about that. Because if you get hit for a big one, they can, they can garnish your wages. Is it gar- gar- garner your wages, right? Garner? Garnish is something on yeah. food play. And garner your wages for a very long time. So I understand that it is it's a, a tough road to hoe when you can't find a commercial slip or you don't have money. But I mean, fucking dude, that's business. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta have something. You know what I mean? One thing I one thing I read that sticks out about Bearbo we ha- we didn't really touch upon is that what I'm reading is that you're practically giving up possession. The owner is giving up possession of the boat to the Bearbo charter. Mm-hmm. And that's a pretty big deal. And and that's that's why, like, if, if you're going to do bare boat charters and you're technically giving up possession of your boat for that for that charter, that guy has to have some type of insurance. And I think you mentioned it earlier, Kevin, that yeah. typically in a, in a bare boat relationship, the person renting must have some type of insurance to cover the loss in case they. But yeah, but is it commercial it. liability or is it fucking Geico? Do you have personal yeah. liability? Like up to what? How much money? 10 grand? Like that's what I'm saying. Like it's so mm-hmm. ambiguous and so – and it doesn't pertain. It's like I just want to know what the fucking speed limit is here, man. Is it 25 miles an hour but it's 30 miles an hour for a guy that fucking you know, bowed my car? It makes no fucking sense. I don't understand. I cannot understand. And I, and I called the Coast Guard and spoke to them personally about this. I said, I can't fucking wrap my head around this. No license? Six? piece of paper written between me and the boat owner 12 what the fuck is that it makes yeah. sense. and i'll tell you another thing i i saw this like so you know somebody was bitching to me i'm not gonna mention names but somebody was bitching to me about about somebody like renting out a ski for the day for like 200 bucks and i said man if i were you i'd fucking rent it from them and, and then fucking rent it out to other people for you know 100 bucks an hour dude and then he's got to pay for the gas too. Sounds like you're getting a steal. And if they get fucking crushed to death, then you're not going to get sued. I think this is a fantastic business opportunity. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't don't do that shit, man. You know, don't don't. That's that's bad. It, it's just bad business, in my opinion. You know. Let's say that I'm I'm big into like yachting, and I want to do a big, you know, three day sail. And a handful of my buddies get together, and we pull. You know, ten thousand dollars. We have a uh, professional captain that's done these many times over, right. and that professional captain, you know, finds a vessel that he is familiar with and puts a trip together. That that seems to be the most reasonable way bear boating works. Absolutely. And you know, what? if you really want to know, then 
call your local Coast Guard station and find out and ask them the best way to proceed. Because it's going to be different from North Florida to South Florida to Pennsylvania to whatever, New York, whatever you're going to be. Call your local Coast Guard station, tell them what your plans are and ask them what the best way to proceed forward is. Because that's huge, man. What you're talking about is like this huge thing underway, you know, 12 people on the boat. You got a captain. Is it an inspected? I don't know. Like, I just want to start leasing out my yacht. I mean, that's a whole different world. And I think that's where I agree with you that that probably pertains to bare boat charters. Yeah, I think that's. So if someone came, let's say I'm, I'm running, you know, I'm in your position, right? Like I'm, I run boats. If, if a guy came to me, a char, a, a captain uh, or, or a charter captain comes to me and says, Hey, 10 people pulled together, $500. They're going to rent. They're going to, they're, they're going to hire me to do their rental, do their uh, charter. Uh, I have insurance. I want to rent from one of your boats because you got nice pontoon boats. That, that seems to be the proper way. However, I don't know if I want to deal with that because now I got to check and check this guy's insurance out. I got to check his credentials. It seems to be a lot of work for the, I can just turn around and rent that boat and make just as much money. <laughs> so why yeah. go through the hassle? So my, I'm thinking that for, for like water sport, like day rentals, I don't think it's, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone can comment on the, on the episode and say, hey, we do it and this is how, you know, how we make money. But it just seems like, just renting the damn thing is going to be a hell of a lot less I, and, stressful. And, and, and I want to like touch on touch point on this, this one thing that I find I'm, I'm pretty fucking passionate about, man. And, and, and that's like, again, cause I saw some problems with our tours and I, well, I took my guides out and I explained it to them and I, and I, and I pointed it out these boats. I said, just watch this boat, watch what it does. It's just going to stay right on this path, man. Here's how you can knock him off his path without being dangerous about it. You know, from years and years and years of, of flying, watching boats, watching the way they drive, watching. I, if you're an OUPV six pack in Destin, I'm sorry, no offense, but you, I, I look, man, you got time. You got a lot of time, man. You know, you need 30 years to, to, to get to amass the hours. When you watch all these boats, when you're parasailing, when you are going underneath another sail, when you're going over the top of another sail, when you're watching another experienced parasail captain, and I've talked to, you know, a hundred parasail captains from, you know, one year in to five years in to 10 years in, some of these guys, 20 years in, they're way more experienced than me. And it's just, you know, you can just dance around each other and you're watching these boats and these jet skis and you're watching what they're doing. And you watch and you know what they're going to do and, and you know what they're going to do before they do it just from watching the movements like you talk to a, a pilot you know you like with these the fighter pilots when you say like they're acting a certain way or they're flying a certain way you know they're making these intentions these moves you know you're going out in your family you're going out with your business with your family whatever it may be you know at the end of the day this is a dangerous proposition you know we're going out on the water going out on jet skis and it's it's very important that even as an owner if you're just running this shit out Go take your captain's license. Get your captain's license. Go take out some charters with that captain's license. Six or under. Take these people out. Get out on the water. If you're an owner, operator, but or you're getting in the game, you want to rent boats out, fantastic. But you've got to go know the, char- the, the navigational characteristics of your waterways. It's so important. you got to know how these other boats – we got to know where the pain points are, where the where the congestion is, where the open riding is, all this good shit. It is so important that you actually have time on the water. Like I take it, uh, the maritime industry is is so steeped in tradition. Like I had a kid rent a boat today. I was talking to him and I was talking about a naval architect and, and the stability letter thing. Uh, this is shit I talk about <laughs> randomly <laughs> to other people. But the kid goes, naval architects suck, man. And I was like, I was like, well, what are you talking? This kid's like twenty years old. He's like, well, I'm, and he goes, uh, well, I'm I'm going to I'm going to school uh, to be a merchant mariner. I was like, oh, you're going to uh, the maritime academy. He goes, yeah. And I've had friends go to the maritime academy. And, and man, you have got to know advanced mathematics. Like, like you got to be a mathematician to to uh, like advanced trigonometry. Like the all this stuff that that the way these guys plot their. Uh, uh, plot their courses and uh, the ability to read chart and all this type of stuff. Like I looked at that kid and, and he will get out of there knowing more about boats 
and water and the whole industry than I'll probably ever know. Now, don't get me wrong. You put me on a fucking boat. Like, I get it. But, I mean, these these kids, I mean, Maritime Academy is four years. You live on campus. You That's a full-time degree when you're done. because And you start off as a what's called a third mate, which means you are way down the line from the actual master of that vessel. So there's this is something that I take personally very seriously. And I instill all the shit in my employees that you are not a dock hand. You're not a jet, a jet ski guy. You're a maritime professional. And we have an obligation to our customers, to our tours, to all these people out there and to our community to make sure that we are the stewards of our waterways. So I, I this all, and I don't give a shit if you've been in the game for 20 years, man. You blog those hours on that boat. You get out there, you go out and watch your waterways. You watch the way people drive. It, it, it's just really important to me. So that's why the whole bare bones charter thing, people renting jet skis on Craigslist and shit like that. It, it's, a, it's a really, uh, to me, it's very, it's problematic. So you're so just to cap it off here, you're if you want to become a bare boat charter, you really got to know what the risk is. You got to know what the law and is. You want to know what the law the is. is, and you got to know your way around. I think you should know your way around a fucking boat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, yeah. So. Yeah. It doesn't sound like I mean for 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 pontoon jet ski and like our day day tour day rental doesn't seem like it's something that that might make sense for most water sports. I could be wrong, but it no, seems to me what may, seems to make more sense for. For yeah. larger, larger operations, yachts, you know, three day sails. In fact, I think my in laws went, did a bare boat charter. So I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not shitting on the bare boat industry. I, I, I'm truly not. I, I'm just saying that that without without a, 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 a credential, without a merchant mariner credential on that person's hand, I'm a little skeptical. You know, like I'm a little skeptical if that person does not have the logged hours and the maritime credential to drive a boat professionally. Like it, to, to me, that's, that's problematic. And look, and, and look, these 500 ton unlimited and these unlimited masters who go on six month research vessels and shit like that. And look at me driving a fucking parasail boat with my little hundred ton cracker jack, you know, to, uh, double two weekend license. You know, they probably think I'm a joke, you know, so. I just, I, I, I think that in certain areas, you know, if you got a guy that's doing like a bare boat, like you said, and he's got his license, he's got all the shit, and this is something that he runs day in and day out, and this is their industry. And look, there's some guys down here, up here, whatever, that, that are running, doing the bare boat game, and they know these waters, and they know Crab Island, and they know their shit, and they're going back and forth every single day, and they've been on this water forever. You know, that's, that's a whole different thing. But just some Tom, Dick, and Harry that walks up and hands you his number and says, put me on your list. I'm a fucking bare boat charter captain. Because we have it all the time. People just come up and say, hey, you know, 40 bucks an hour. I'm a captain. No, thanks. I'm all set. I'm not giving somebody, a, one of my customers, some guy from Craigslist number who says he's really, like, really great with pontoon boats. You know, I, I'm just, I don't no. know. Yeah. So anyway... That that's that's my hot take on it. I'm not the master of bare boat charter. I don't, you know, it might be the greatest thing since sliced bread. I, I just I don't I'm not putting my customers on a boat with somebody or referring my customers to somebody that just walked up and, and handed me their fucking car that they had made on Vistaprint and said, Yeah, I do charter charter captaining or whatever. Yeah. Um, and and you said something I think was really You've been listening to, to the Awkward the Water Sport Guys podcast. To get if you're in the water sport industry, how, how this is the podcast that brings the business perspective the to parasailing, to jet and ski boat it's rentals, it's sailing, it's snorkeling, it's and it's everything it's else. It's we hope you've gotten some useful that. and practical information <laughs> from this show. Be sure to sign up well, to our I email list at watersportpodcast.com and subscribe in your favorite podcast app. We'll see you next time. And thanks for listening. Share, you know, let's join in the conversation. If, if you have anything, uh, if, if bare boat charters have worked for you and you have some type of formula that's worked great, share it. And that's it. It's a wrap. All right. Thanks for listening. And as always, keep it awkward.